Thank you. Yeah. It's good to see all of your faces here this morning. Welcome to Naples First Church of the Nazarene. And I pray that if there's anyone here today who has not entered into a saving relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, that today would be the day that you enter into that relationship. Amen? Amen. Repent and believe. And this first hymn says it all. And the water and the blood from thy wounded side will flow. Be of sin the double pure, saved from wrath, to make us pure. Amen. Stand with us, please. Let's sing Rock of Ages.
years. Here. Eight, 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 eight and a half? <laughs> Thank you for the correction. You guys are awesome. We just love you guys. And um, you guys, their whole life, have really been doing God's work. And I'm so thankful for that. And hopefully we've got another eight and a half or more. Okay. So I believe these are for you guys. I don't know what they are, but they, they look pretty good. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you, church. And we, as a church, are also blessed for Miss Lindsay and John. Through the years, we've had a few different youth pastors, and you guys are awesome. We have had some really great ones, and you know they've they've come and go. And we are just so blessed that you guys are here. Amen. I, oh, thank you so much because what you know the Lord is doing in your lives, you guys bring to the church, and we're just thumbs up. <laughs> so we also have a little. Something, something for you guys. So, hope you guys enjoy these. And, church, how about a huge round of Because our time is limited and we have quite a bit to do this morning, uh, we would like to take more time than we will. But we uh, use this in award as signifying the ministry of the people here in this church family. So when someone receives this award, I want you to know that in a sense it's like all of you getting it. It doesn't elevate one person or a couple above the rest of the church family. It just signifies that this is what the Lord is doing. And we appreciate the faithfulness. People who are faithful, who work hard, who have lots of other obligations. And somehow, in their ministry and their lives, they are stewards and they are faithful, serving the church and the kingdom among us. And we're often amazed at how much they give and sacrifice. And that's you. Now some of you aren't in a public ministry or some type of elected position. But even behind the scenes you are praying, you're encouraging, you're supporting, you're giving. And you're a very vital part of this church family. And so we appreciate the ministry of lay people who give of their heart and lives for the church of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen? Amen? So this Distinguished Service Award, we give this out annually, and a couple that has served very faithfully among us, um, they have given for many years and have been a vital, encouraging part of this church. And we just want to tell them how much we appreciate them. And I would like to have Dale and Lura Hanula come forward, please.
President Dale and Laura, this is the Distinguished Service Award. Uh, it says Naples First Church of the Nazarene takes pleasure in presenting this certificate. A grateful church on behalf of our Lord Jesus Christ offers this appreciation for the people you have influenced into his kingdom. The greatest honor is to hear his words, well done, good and faithful servant. And I want you to know as we present this that a gift is given in honor of our missionaries to help with their health care plan. And it comes on behalf of the church. And thank you guys so much for serving the Lord. Yeah. Someone here among us went beyond the ordinary and they gave in a sacrificial manner. And uh, this award has, is presented to a couple that have faithfully opened up their home and their lives and have served among us for many years. And I know that you'll agree that this couple, we appreciate their ministry. In a sense, they're transitioning out of the ministry that they are in which I will mention in just a moment. And yet, they're not out of that ministry. They're still there, they're still faithful, and they've come through a season of their life where they now have an empty nest, and they're seeking God as to where their next ministry will be here among us. But they have been faithful in the area of ministry which is among our youth. And Ken and Denise Main, please come forward if you would. So he could do so. Um, 
Maybe I'll just start. Okay, well, here's the award there. Wow. You can have that, yeah. Very nice. Then we also have some gifts um, on behalf of the youth group. Uh, yeah. Wow. I'll tell you. Yeah, yeah. For all the all the things you've served uh, as far as food and snacks and wrecking your budget on teens eating all your food, um, there's a little extra there and a gift. <laughs> Another gift there. Now this box is very Denise esque. So that's enough. But inside is a bunch of letters from past teens. Thank you for your years of service, and um, I think you'll enjoy that. And uh, we got a lot from years past and even current. And uh, we just thank you so much, and pray God's blessings on you guys. Amen.
And uh, ushers, you can make your way forward. Let us pray. Father God, we give you thanks for this day. And this is time we could uh, recognize people in our church who have given so much in service to your kingdom and for your glory, Lord. And we thank, thank you for the church that recognizes those people. But especially those who willingly give of their time and their money and their service, Lord. And Lord, we pray over this offering that you bless it and continue to allow us to be effective in our ministries, Lord. And as we move forward into this new season, that you uh, lead people here that we can show them Christ and that we see lives transformed. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. time when we remember those among us that have passed away went on to be with the Lord. This is called the memorial roll. And again, we had a video presentation for this and some pictures for you and we'll see if that works. I think some of it will work back there. And again, if you can turn and you can see some of that. Betty, come forward if you would, our missions president. And we'd like to have the following families come forward. Jim Fortner's family, if you come and stand here across the front. And Jack Lowry's family, please come and stand yeah, right across the front here and face our congregation. Jeremy Hanula, his family, if you come forward. Thomas Mazza, family. Those representing Gerald Donna. I think I hope I pronounced that right, Lindsay. And Ervil Fisher, Sr. This is father. And one family that could not be here this morning that we remember uh, this gentleman. Uh, come on, Tom, you're welcome. Come on up. And that is uh, Bud Witherby's family. So we remember Bud Witherby. We have a rose to give uh, to the families.
Jeremy. Bless you. Bless you guys for being here this morning too. Thank you. Gentlemen, so we give that certificate to you in remember, memory of your father, Gerald. Yes. And guys, we give that to you in memory of your father who passed away most recently. Bless you all. All of you, we keep you in our prayers thoughts as a church family, and when someone in our family goes through a struggle, we go through the struggle with them. Amen? So remember them in prayer. Write them a note. Let them know you're thinking about them. And uh, thank you for being faithful to the Lord during a time of testing and trial. And there's a very short verse in Philippians that says, the Lord is near. And you know that He is near you to comfort you and to help you in this time. So I don't know. Is this going to play? Are you going to try it? No go? It's fine. Okay. God bless you. We'll let you be seen. <laughs> We're going to move now into Holy Communion, and we would like to invite our servers to come forward, and we will prepare our hearts to receive communion. Hold the elements in your hands, and I will instruct you when to partake. We do not require that you be a member of the Church of the Nazarene. We believe biblically that communion is for those who have asked Jesus Christ to forgive their sins and are trusting in Him for salvation and following Him. Communion can be a time where the Holy Spirit can inspect your heart and your life. And ask the Holy Spirit as you're waiting on the elements and holding them in your hands, ask Him to show you anything that might be displeasing in His sight. And turn that over to Him and allow Him to wash you in His blood, cleanse you. And may this be to our soul's delight. Again, hold the elements until I instruct you.
Let's bow our heads in prayer. Almighty God, we can't grasp the sacrifice that you willingly gave of your one and only Son, Jesus Christ. We do thank you. And as we share this Holy Communion as the family of God, we do so knowing, trying to understand the passion, the suffering, the sacrifice of our Lord. We also do so with gratefulness and thankfulness and joy, knowing that only through the blood of Jesus Christ are we saved. And that is our hope. And we bless you. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was broken for you, preserve you blameless unto everlasting life. Let's eat together. Amen. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was poured out for you, the blood of the new covenant, let's drink together. Thank you, precious Lord. We stand as those that have received the amazing grace of God that looks beyond our faults and sees deeply into our need and pours out salvation, forgiveness, cleansing, mercy, truth, we thank you. May we live a life of gratefulness. We owe the greatest of debts. And the only way we can even attempt to work on that debt is by the power of the Spirit loving God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And loving our neighbor as ourself. And that will be a life that will bring glory to God. And that's the greatest aim, the desire of our hearts, that we may glorify you, make you know, that the world may know, that people may see Jesus high and lifted up. And it's in his strong name we pray. I would like to invite you to take your Bible, please, and turn to Hebrews chapter 9. This morning the message is the blood of Christ. And in Hebrews chapter 9, the second part of verse 22 is the text this morning. And I'd like to invite you to stand in honor of God's Word. Hebrews 9, 22, Part B. This is the Word of the Lord. And without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. I repeat, and without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. Let's pray. Lord, may the word of God preach this morning. May it lift up you, Jesus. May the preacher be hid behind the cross. And Christ be seen. And the Holy Spirit, may you do your work in the hearts of men and women. Children. Youth. May you... Impress upon us this morning the truths about the blood of Jesus Christ. And we thank you for that blood that was shed for us. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. The first thing about the blood of Christ is that the blood of Christ has bought us. The 
blood of Christ has purchased us. In 1 Peter 1 verse 18, it says, For you know that you are not bought with corruptible things such as silver or gold, or from the vain conversation received by the tradition from your fathers, but you were bought with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot. The blood of Jesus Christ is priceless. People are running to buy investments that they think will last. Something that can multiply and last and give to them help and financial assistance later on. But I say to you the most valuable tre treasure that has ever existed is the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ has bought us through His blood. The idea of redemption means to buy back. It means to bring us back into a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 53 verse 6, We all like sheep have gone astray, and each one of us has turned to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Romans chapter 3 verse 22 through 23 says this, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith in Jesus Christ, unto all and upon them all that believe, for there is no difference. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God hath set forth to be a propitiation through faith in His blood, to declare His righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. This morning I remind you through the word of the Lord, a firm foundation, that you are purchased, you are bought, you are redeemed by the blood of Christ. Amen? Amen. A man in Ireland once observed a little boy who had caught a sparrow the little bird was trembling in his hands and was anxious to escape. The gentleman asked the boy if he would let the bird go because it wouldn't do him any good. And the boy said no, he did not plan to let the bird go. He said, I've chased this bird for three hours and I'm not letting it go. The man continued to reason with the boy, but it was all in vain. At last he offered to buy the bird the boy agreed to the price, and it was purchased. Then the gentleman took the poor little sparrow into his hands, and he opened his hands and let it loose. But because the boy had been holding the bird so tight, the bird did not realize that it was now free. But after a little while, the bird opened its wings and flew away, chirping as it went, as if to say, Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Jesus Christ has bought us, has purchased us out of condemnation for our sins through His blood. That becomes our suffering, only we didn't have to suffer on the cross. He did that. But as a result of that, we live a life of thankfulness inwardly in our hearts and living His life in the world that we are in. The blood of Christ has bought us, has purchased us. Amen? Secondly, the blood of Christ speaks. The blood of Christ has two cries, either for our damnation or for our salvation. If I reject Christ and His blood, I stand condemned. If I accept Christ and His work, I am pardoned and cleansed. Because the blood of Christ speaks. Remember the criminal hanging next to Christ on the cross. And out of a humble heart and a penitent heart, he said, remember me, Lord, when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him today, I tell you today, you will be with me in paradise. 
But the other criminal next to him had mocked him and denied him and did not receive him as far as we know. Colossians chapter 1 verse 20 says, Having made peace through the blood of his cross. Having made peace through the blood of his cross. People are searching for peace. They're reading books trying to find peace. We live in a restless world, don't we? That restlessness even affects the church. But we're not satisfied. We need more. And there's an insatiable desire that this happened, or I'm discontented with this. Oh, that we would receive the peace that the blood of Christ speaks about. And in this world that is restless, you can't buy peace. You may be able to attain some sort of financial peace, but I've been told that even the more that you have, there is still worries that go alongside of that in taking care of it. And the greatest peace that is in this world, the greatest peace is the peace of having all of our sins washed and cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. There's no greater peace. You mean I can be cleansed and forgiven? Yes. Because the blood of Christ speaks. <coughs> Romans 3.25 says, Whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in His blood, to declare His righteousness for the remission of sin. That word propitiation, I can't explain it, but I'll try. Who can explain God? Who can explain His mercy and His grace? But from God's heart, from God's heart, as His Son, Jesus, hung and bled and died on the cross, as God observed this sacrifice, which was truly Him in the flesh, he gave himself for us. As God observed this sacrifice and was in this sacrifice, God is saying and speaking that the blood of my son is more than sufficient. Just one drop is more than sufficient to forgive and cleanse from sin. He, his life, himself. There was once a mother that was trying to reconcile her son and his father. The son and the dad had a falling out, and they became angry. And as they went apart from each other, they said, I'll never apologize to you, say I'm sorry first. The son left the home. He seldom spoke to anybody in the family. Occasionally, his mother wrote him, and he wrote back. The mother began to work on getting them to apologize to who would apologize first. She wrote the son and said if all he would do is just show a little bit to his father that he was sorry, then that would get it going the right direction. She worked on her husband to say the same thing. This mother fell ill. It seemed as if this sickness would turn to death. She asked the dad to contact the son and tell him to come home because of how ill she was. The dad was reluctant to swallow his pride. Finally, he did. And when the boy came into the hospital room, the dad went into the other room to get away from the son. The mother over the days ahead grew worse. And it looked like her life was about to come to an end and she called both of their names and took one hand of both of them in hers. As she breathed her last, she placed their hands together. The dad and the son embraced and cried to each other for forgiveness. I declare to you that Jesus did this for us. When he brought man and God together on the cross, giving his blood. The blood of Jesus speaks. 
Amen? The blood of Christ has bought us. Paid a great price. His blood. The blood of Christ speaks. I suppose I shouldn't say the blood of Christ speaks. The blood of Christ amidst the fury and the lies of the enemy doesn't just speak. It shouts, forgiveness, forgiveness. Amen? Amen. The blood of Christ speaks. And then third, the blood of Christ is His life poured out for us. John 19, 34 says, But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side, and forthwith came out blood and water. That means when that spear went into the side of Jesus Christ, hanging there on a cross who was now dead, that spear came out covered with blood. It was the real blood of our Savior, Jesus. Revelation chapter 1 verse 5 says, Unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. I remind you this morning, there is no need of waiting until you get good enough to accept the salvation of our Lord Jesus Christ. We sing that hymn and we shared it this morning, praise God. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. Rock of ages, cleft for me, let me hide myself in thee. Let the water and the blood from thy wounded side which flowed be of sin the double cure. Cleanse from guilt and make me pure. Another song that we sing. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come. Through Jesus Christ, you come as you are. You don't pretend. You don't put on a Sunday face. You don't have to wear certain clothes. As a matter of fact, the Bible says those are the things that man looks at. Man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. Come as you are to Jesus Christ with the mess, with the infirmities, with the sin, and Jesus Christ, through His blood, forgives. Matthew 26, 28 says, For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for the remission of sins. Hebrews 13, 12 says, Jesus suffered without the camp to sanctify us by His own blood. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 28 and 29 talks about a very serious punishment for he who treats the blood of Christ as an unholy thing. Revelation chapter 12, verse 11 says they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. Revelation 7, 14 says, These are they which came out of the great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. The blood of Christ is His life poured out for us. There is no other way to be forgiven in God's eyes. There is no plan B. There is no book no healing process, no therapy that can substitute for what the blood of Christ does. Many people try. Some people try to atone for their sins. That may be altruistic. And they may make a, make a whole life of making up for what they've done wrong. That may be nice and altruistic, but it doesn't remove the spot, the darkness of the sin inside the heart. The blood of Jesus Christ is His life poured out for us. 1 Timothy 1.15 says this, Here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world
to save sinners, of which I am the worst. All of us have sinned. Amen? We've all gone astray. We've all done the most foolish of things. Some outside and some right directly from our heart, which Christ says is just as bad. And we find out that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners. And He's the only one as His life is poured out. In 1893, the World's Fair took place in Chicago. It was the 400th anniversary of Christopher Columbus, Christopher Columbus arriving in the New World. 400 and actually one years, 401 years prior to that, the fair was delayed for a year. At that fair, there was an exhibit. It was called the Parliament of the World's Religions. Dr. Joseph Cook represented the Christian religion. One by one, the representatives of the various world religions stood to speak and give a presentation on behalf of their beliefs. Dr. Cook was the last to speak. He turned to the English literature, Shakespeare, for his example, and he told the story of Lady Macbeth. She had killed her husband and tried to wash the spot of guilt off of her conscience. One of, the, one of the statements that she makes, I won't repeat, but she says, oh, this D-A-M-N spot. I can't get rid of it. In conclusion, he asked all of those representatives of the world religions there, gentlemen, does your religion have anything that will remove the spot of blood from Lady Macbeth's hand and heart? One by one, the various men shook their heads. Theirs was a negative religion, not positive like Christianity. Gentlemen, said Dr. Cook, the religion of Christ has this, quote, the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin, end of quote. And when he finished the presentation, the spirit-filled choir from Dr. D.L. Moody's church rose from the balcony, and they sang the hallelujah chorus from Handel's oratory, the Messiah. And he shall reign forever and ever, King of kings, Lord of lords, hallelujah, hallelujah. And when the last hallelujah had been finished, Dr. Cook raised his head, and all the representatives of the various religions had filed out in the face of a religion such as that. We praise God that the blood of Christ is His life poured out for us. Amen? Amen. I'd like to invite you to bow your heads, please. All heads bow. We've shared in Holy Communion. We've sang a very powerful song, Oh, the Blood. We've shared this morning what the blood of Christ has done. The blood of Christ has bought us, purchased us. When others say guilty, when others say condemned, when others say you'll never get over this, the blood of Christ speaks. Or the blood of Christ shouts. Forgiveness, cleansing, healing, victory through the blood of Christ. The blood of Christ represents a life of Jesus poured out for us. This morning you have the opportunity in the midst of a group of believers and in a moment when the word has been preached to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. Not to claim your own goodness or any works that you may do, but to only rely on the blood of Christ. Let's pray. Jesus, 
as we've come to you, Lord, there are hearts this morning that I know need you. There are some this morning that may need to be encouraged in some special way through your word and about your blood. We thank you that your blood was shed for us. We're sorry, Lord, if we've ever treated you you and your gift of salvation and the blood of Christ in a way that was disrespectful. And we know we have. We honor you. We thank you. And we pray right now those that need to make a commitment to you receive your grace and mercy through your blood that they will do so. All heads bow. <coughs> The altar in the church is always open. If you'd like to come forward, this is an invitation. You can come and kneel at the altar. Pray. Trust in the blood of Christ. The altar is symbolic of kneeling at the feet of Jesus. You may need forgiveness. You may need comfort. You may need encouragement. I heard the speaker say today in our men's class that God's not all bent out of shape and uptight when you sin, but that he just wants to pour out his mercy and grace upon you so that you won't sin again. I remind you, his blood was poured out for you. If you'd like to come and kneel, the altar's open. We'll wait just a moment. Some have come. Are there any others that would like to kneel before the Lord? A beautiful place of prayer at the altar. We'll wait just a moment. Are there any that would like to slip their hand up to the Lord and say, Pastor, please remember me in prayer. I want to trust the blood of Christ. And in my heart, I'm kneeling before Him right now. Thank you. Yes. Any other, any other hands lifted to Christ? Thank you. Yes, thank you. Any others? Lift it to the Lord. You can put your hands down. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, kneeling here at the altar, our people, who you gave your blood for, you gave your life, you poured yourself out for them. And in humility and an act of honor, they're kneeling before the King of kings and Lord of lords. And there's an expression here at this altar of Jesus Christ, I need you. For some it may be a spot that they can't seem to get rid of. But only the blood of Christ will take care of that spot. Though your sins be like crimson, they shall be white as wool. Jesus will place a brand new white robe of righteousness upon them. Some, Lord, need help. There's an impending doctor's report. We pray for Kathy here praying at the altar. And there's worry. Remind each one, Lord. Look at the birds of the air. They don't sow or store up in barns, and yet your heavenly Father takes care of them. Look at the flowers of the field. Not even Solomon was dressed in his, and all the splendor was like these flowers. Oh, you of little faith, how much more valuable are you to God than these things? We pray that at this altar, those that need to trust you will trust you this morning. Those that will receive the grace of the Lord and forgiveness, that that will happen right now. Whatever they're praying about, we lift them up as brothers and sisters in the Lord and ask for your touch. Thank you, Jesus Christ, that you forgive sin and that you guide us and lead us and show us the way to live. Bless each one, I pray. Those that raise their hand, touch them. Thank you for your faithfulness, O oh God. May the word of the Lord be impressed upon our heart as we leave this place.
that we think of the great gift of God, His Son Jesus, and the offer of salvation. Dwell on these things and meditate on them to our heart's content. And we will give you all the thanks and all the praise. In the strong name of Jesus we pray. Amen. And amen. You're welcome to pray as long as you like and you can return to your sins. Amen. God is good, amen. getting ready for our live nativity. This is an outreach that is growing every year and it's demanding the help of more people. So as I understand, as soon as we dismiss here, we're going to gather right here. And I would say the center section and towards the front, quickly, we'll have our meeting. If you're standing around, not part of that, we're going to put you down and assign you something. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here today. It's been a great day in the Lord. God bless you. You're dismissed.